Hello and welcome to the channel. Um, we're going to basically be doing a bit of a follow-up on a previous video that I did on the Gate Titan um, for the Tokyo Marine Next Gen Recall System. Um, so before we kick off, I uh, just want to kind of do a bit of housekeeping. Uh, if you like today's video, please hit the like button. Um, if you want to see more of my content, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell icon and uh, you'll get notified when we post new stuff so let's kick on with the with the discussion um, this video is going to have a couple of parts we're going to just talk a little bit about the guns uh, that I've got it in and what um, their kind of roles are and how those have been kind of set up and then there's going to be a bit where we talk about the software and then there's going to be a bit of a, a, a sort of closing. Um, so, sort of late last year, I acquired a Gate Titan uh, V2 NGRS. Um, and I had that fitted to this gun here. This is my Tokyo Marie HK416D. Delta Custom, and this was the first gun I had upgraded with the MOSFET. And I've been running that since. It's done uh, milsims, it's done skirmishes. Um, uh, I've used it, I've let a couple of my friends uh, and teammates uh, use this gun, and it is a brilliant sort of addition to this, this, this gun. Um, it's change the trigger to be very very responsive firing rate and everything else on this has been absolutely awesome the next gun i had it added to was this guy here this is my tokyo Mirai 416d uh, dev grew and this uh, basically was upgraded um, earlier in the year had um, a whole new internals done and the MOSFET fitted at the same time and basically this got run uh, in some milsims and has been rock solid since I had that fitted and has been a really really good addition to this gun and then this guy here my um, Tokyo Marie HK417 um, it's basically the latest gun to have the, the MOSFET fitted to. In fact, literally this has only had this done for just a little bit over a week at the time of filming. And has I have literally just used this in one uh, milsim since it was fitted. And basically this is a DMR. So both these guns here are assault rifles. They've been set up as assault rifles. They've been set up in slightly different ways. Um, but essentially they are used in um, certain scenarios. This guy here has been set up as a DMR, um, so it has enhanced power um, and has you know, kind of been set up with some precision um, and, um, internals to kind of promote um, that sort of long range use. And then on top of that, we've had the, the, the MOSFET installed to act as the semi-auto lock for the gun, but also to provide some um, extra um, capability. Now, I've been pretty impressed with the Titans. Um, when we first installed this, and I think I mentioned in my initial video, or at least some Instagram posts afterwards, there were some issues with this gun when it was first installed. Uh, the selector plate, for instance, on this um, was a little bit worn, because this gun had been used a bit before I um, had it fitted, and it was causing um, issues with the calibration of the uh, sensor that's inside for um, the actual um, fire selection and with that being replaced um, that basically solved those issues um, this guy here has been rock solid since it's been installed and so far this guy has been rock solid since it was installed as well and it has you know essentially I've learned a couple of things about um, the configuration and the tweaking um, and how to get the best performance out of each of these guns as a result. Now the other thing I've been very impressed with is the software. 
So we're going to take a look at the gate control station software um, shortly that runs on a PC. It also runs on a Mac as well, which is great. Um, but also they have a mobile application. So the one of the um, the key things with the uh, gates off um, gate Titan is this little USB link. And if I move it a bit closer to the camera and try and get you can see this is a tiny USB um, adapter that enables you to communicate with the MOSFET that's in the gun. And you plug that in to the, the battery connector and effectively uh, allow, and the um, computing device and it allows you to communicate. So I'm just going to connect this up to the mobile app and um, I'm just going to quickly show you that. So that um, it's very, very straightforward. It just plugs in and let me just uh, pull up the, the app and there we have, this is my Android phone and uh, we've basically got um, the, the software installed and you can, it is literally just a really useful piece of software. You can go into settings, you can configure and change the gun from here. It's really, really, really good. And the, and the calibration, you can get the statistics from the gun and you can even perform diagnostics on the gun as well. Uh, this is really good. I've used this a couple of times in, in, in the field effectively where I've, you know, just wanted to check something on the gun or tweak a configuration. So, for instance, I was at a, a game with uh, one of these, one of these two, actually. I can't remember which one it was exactly. Um, but I, I needed to tweak the burst setting. Um, so I had uh, the, gun set, the gun's trigger set up to be um, basically safe, semi, uh, burst and full auto. And I had to turn. I wanted to turn the auto off and change the burst setting so it was a lower value. And I was able to do that in the field. Just pull out the phone, connect up the cable, and boom, I was able to do it. And it's great, great feature that you have here with the uh, the software on the phone. And I've been pretty impressed by this. Just the the slickness of the the, the platform, basically. Um. So, in all in all. I've basically um, sort of set three guns up with slightly different setting, settings for the two assault rifles. Um, one's kind of geared towards a very responsive, twitchy kind of feel, and one's a slightly more realistic and, and sluggish um, kind of feel on it. Um, a little heavier trigger um, and so on, because for instance, I found uh, with this gun, this one's actually one with it's got a very light trigger. Um, I found that basically um, in certain situations I kind of wanted a little bit more um, control in a sense of I wanted to have to pull more on the trigger to actually get, to, get it to fire um, and it, it, I found this actually a little bit better in darkness um, I wanted it to sort of be a little bit slower um, so I don't accidentally trigger um, just by catching something in the dark while you're fumbling around and so on. Um, so this one is kind of set up to be a slightly less responsive. And then we have um, obviously the DMR is set up as a DMR so it's got certain things that are set up to kind of um, make it a little bit more like a traditional DMR, a little bit more, le again, less twitchy. Uh, stronger trigger pull, all those things that you kind of associate with a, deal, with a, a gun that's going to be um, firing a heavy caliber round. So, um, all in all, um, I've been pretty impressed with the Titan. So what we're going to do now is uh, kind of switch over and look at the gate control software uh, on the PC and I'm going to run through a whole bunch of the settings and uh, some of the features of that software. So here we have the gate control station software and first things first we're going to hook everything up so adding the USB link um, will basically sort of come in and as you can see it's been uh, detected once that's detected you can connect up a rifle so we're going to connect up one of my 
416s. So let's plug this in. And you'll see that's now been detected. Uh, so we've got a Titan V2 NGRS um, advanced attached. A uh, couple of things to note here. What we have um, here is an indicator of the version of firmware we've got. Uh, we've got an advanced firmware version here. Uh, this is for basic, this is for advanced, and this is for the new, I think it's expert release um, or enhanced. Um, it's something that's unreleased uh, but is due for release at some point. And uh, what we can do here is if you have a basic version, you can upgrade by hitting this button here. Um, if you've got new versions of firmware available, you can. it will tell you uh, here and you can update them. Likewise for the USB link, if you've got a firmware update, you can update it here as well. And also you can downgrade um, firmware versions if you have firmware version to downgrade, so sort of like so. Next thing we'll do is take a look at some of the settings. So first things first, uh, we've got our different settings here. So we have a uh, fire mode selector. Uh, this is um, one of my, my 416 Delta Custom and it has been set up for semi safe, uh, sorry, safe semi burst. And I'm using pre cocking mode on this gun to improve its um, sort of reaction time. And I've got a low pre cocking boost in there. Uh, we've got a the burst mode is set uh, to full with a burst uh, round count of four. I'm using rate of fire stabilization and rate of fire control, and I'm not using sniper delay. Uh, the pre these modes here, um, a lot of these are actually advanced modes only, so you can't really change them. Um, along with some of these fire modes, um, unless you have um, the advanced firmware. Next thing uh, we've got is the battery protection. We can define the type of battery in use. So uh, if you're using a LiPo, you'll select this along with the cell count, and then it will give you um, the voltages required uh, for that type of battery for the low battery warning. And you can select between 3.4 volts or 3.2. If you want to use the weapon um, with a sort of round count, um, kind of akin to a sort of more standard magazine uh, for a real weapon, um, you could select the 30 round limit and that will basically force the gun to stop firing at the 30 round mark and then you would uh, at that point um, have to change a mag and reset the gun. You've got cycle detection and equalizer. These are there for uh, detecting the, the, the movement of the gears and so on, and the trigger movement. Uh, we've got active braking involved here. So um, I've actually set it to auto, which basically means it's on, and it will select the appropriate braking uh, percentage for the gun. Then we have the gear ratio. So I've got a standard gearbox in here. So I have standard set, but if you've got a high torque or high speed gearbox, you would select those and uh, use that appropriately. So that's kind of the settings. Uh, next up is the sensors. The sensors is pretty much where you configure the, the weapons um, sensors for detecting things like the trigger pull, uh, the fire selector change uh, and so on. And you can do the calibration here as well. It's also things like the bolt catch and the bolt catch sensor using those, um, using uh, changing sort of the way the trigger works. So it could be a one or a two stage trigger. So once you pull it, it's kind of got two stages to it. Um, you can also sort of calibrate things um, as well by changing sensitivity of the sensors. When you first get uh, a Titan and you fit it to a gun, you will need to do this. Um, you would run through the trigger calibration or the select calibration process and then you basically uh, set things up from there. However, I don't need to do that um, because this gun is already set up and working. So I will leave it as it is. So the next thing that's um, pretty useful to sort of have a look at is the statistics. So this is only available for the advanced firmware version, but what this, the gun does will keep um, information about the firing and the use of the weapon. Uh, so we have the rate of fire um, stats, so this is the, the minimum rate of fire for the rounds that have been fired, the average, and then the max RPS um, of the gun. And in this case, it's been 
peaking at uh, 20 rounds per second. Then we have our trigger response time, so how fast the trigger has been responding, the temperatures that the gun's been operated in. So, for instance, this gun has operated down as low as 3 degrees C. Um, and I can pretty much tell you when that was. That was a mill sim in Wales in February. Um, it was really, really cold, and the gun was basically operating in there in sort of very low temperatures. You also got the current draw information from the gun, so how many... Um, amps at its peak and uh, sort of the average have uh, the gun been drawing um, and then you have the voltages on the battery pack that's in there so you've got the peak battery um, pack value um, so when the battery pack was new dropped in fully charged to the lowest value seen on the battery pack and the final stat it collects is the round count now you've got two different round counts here bb2 and bb1 I've set this, so BB2 is since the last reset. Uh, BB1 is all the rounds that have been fired, and for some reason totals kind of offset, but I'm not sure why. But essentially, since I last reset this, this gun has fired 4,000 rounds, and in total 7,500 rounds. So the final thing to look at is the uh, Diagnostic Trouble Code section, or the DTC section. This is basically where you get feedback from the gun and how it's been performing or any errors that have occurred. So there's a couple of errors that you'll see um, quite often when you've got a Titan. Not necessarily errors, they're just scanner information. Um, but first one is the, what, low, uh, the battery sh um, over discharge protection. Uh, in this case, uh, UVP1 and E08. So UVP1 is triggered when the battery is over discharged or is, is getting flat and essentially that's a fairly uh, common thing so it's basically you'll get warned with a beep or a sort of buzzing sound from the Titan and that basically means you need to change the battery. Uh, the E08 error and there's another similar one um, which I don't think is triggered on this gun uh, but E08 uh, basically is to do with uh, oh actually no so, wrong one. E08 is the light sensor for the uh, fire selector. So basically, if light has got into the, the housing and has kind of tripped the um, fire sensor, I'll find the fire selector switch sensor. There's also one for the trigger as well, which I think. So E18 is basically when the trigger select uh, sensor basically gets a bit of light in there. So that's pretty much the, uh, the, the various settings that you have and the kind of the main key points of the control station software. So I'm just going to switch this over to my 417. And while I do that, um, this will basically just show you, uh, just going to really show here the uh, kind of differences between this and the DMR setup. So um, this has moved over, we've got a different um, weapon in. This um, has a, a very different sort of setup. So for instance here, we have the fire selector mode set to safe semi-semi. So this is a DMR weapon. So in the UK, you can't have a fully automatic DMR weapon. Um, it has to be a single shot for the higher FPS that's allowed. So as a result, we have to use the safe semi uh, semi option to semi lock the gun so no matter what fire selector mode you put it in it has to it will always fire semi auto I don't use the pre-cocking mode here uh, because I kind of want this to be a little less um, responsive because it's a DMR um, and I just kind of want it to be a, a, a little bit more thoughtful in the firing so pre-cocking mode I've turned off so we don't need the pre-cocking boost um, obviously we're not using the burst mode so uh, there and we're not we're using the rate of fire stabilization just so we can kind of stabilize the, the rounds that get fired so you don't end up with the gearbox locking up um, from being firing too quickly um, I'm not using the sniper delay here um, so I could put a small delay on but basically all that does is it kind of slows down the firing between the trigger pull and the firing um, kind of uh, spaces out your shots. Everything else is pretty much the same um, as what we've got on the, the other gun. 
Um, again, we're using active braking. Uh, we're not using the equalizer here. Um, we're not using. Uh, we are using cycle detection and sort of the 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 low battery protection that is kicked in as well. And we've also got a standard gearbox as well, so we've set that up with that. So that's kind of the main differences between uh, a sort of an assault weapon with the Titan that I've got set up and the um, DMR weapon. So with that, um, we'll finish up with the final thoughts. So that was the uh, the Gate Titan control station software. And um, let's kind of wrap this up with you know my final thoughts really on this platform. Um, I've basically been generally pretty impressed by the Titan um, MOSFET. Uh, its configurability is um, out, you know, out of this world, as it were. Uh, just generally speaking, being giving you able, uh, giving you sort of the ability to tweak so many different settings. Um, you can, you know, set up an assault rifle like these two um, to to sort of behave differently in, and and kind of be, you know, maybe more responsive, be more. Uh, uh, twitchy being you know less responsive and less you know maybe being a little bit more sluggish to setting up a dmr platform we have almost a completely different style of rifle um and doing so with the same device i'm just configuring it in a different way and so i at the end of the day i've been pretty impressed by the platform and i've got three guns here that i've had done with uh, at the Titan MOSFET um, and I have two others that potentially could take one. So I have a uh, 416C and that is the the, um, the the rifle that has the kind of the shortened um, uh, handrail and a um, collapsible sliding stock that goes back and sort of goes in here. And this particular that particular gun is what we call front wired uh, tokimuri, and essentially that's because all the battery and everything else is up here, and there's also some battery um, contacts here. Um, and in effect, there is a Titan for that um, that will allow you to sort of front wire it. Uh, then we have um, my essentially Mark 18, which is an M4. CQBR, which has been upgraded to have a Mark 18 rail and kind of have a more Mark 18 feel for it. Um, that one again um, currently doesn't have a tight uh, any MOSFET in it, and and that's probably going to get a MOSFET that has an inter internals that have been upgraded. Um, but the the last thing really is the the MOSFET that he's doing on it. <clears throat> so what's um, you know going forward? I've been pretty impressed. Um, it's made using each of these um, these guns pretty pretty fun. Um, changing the way they handle, um, making trigger response more uh, crisper, um, getting rid of a couple of little niggles that sometimes happen with uh, the recalls. Uh, one of the things that would sometimes happen um, was this if you were firing on the sort of standard non-MOSFETed version pretty quickly you uh, on semi you might get a, a, a gearbox lockup uh, one of the things the Titan does is it eliminates that uh, which is really really good um, it also gives you the ability to sort of find out when your battery is low um, tell you when something's not behaving properly um, all of these things I found to be pretty useful and I think going forward, you know, all of my recalls will have a Titan fitted. Um, the 4 and 6C, I was kind of adamant that I was never going to upgrade it. I was going to keep it stock. Um, you know, n never have it upgraded to higher FPS, um, never change the barrel, anything else. But one of the things it's kind of, this is experience has sort of um, kind of got me towards is um, actually, I think I will. I think I will be upgrading that gun and, and putting a Titan in it. And when I do it, I might as well do the other other things that I've done 
to each of these. I mean, you know, this one's had a new in a barrel done. It's had a new gearbox. Um, you know, it's had new hot bucket uh, rubber and hot uh, nub put in. Uh, same with this guy. Same with this guy. They've all had it. Um, you know, they've all been upgraded FPS wise with with the springs and everything else. Doing that to the la to to all of them when putting a Titan in there is just a logical thing to do. Um, so, would I get this thing again? Yes, I definitely would. Um, I've bought three Titans. I've bought two advanced versions, one basic. I've upgraded the basic that's in here to an advanced, um, and I would probably do. You know, the next two will both be basics. Um, which will then upgrade to advanced firmware. When it comes to buying, um, basically, if you are buying a, your first Titan, I highly recommend you get the advanced version. The reason for that is that's the only version you get the USB link in, this guy. Um, you will need this to be able to program this yourself. If you get a basic, the only way you're going to be able to change the config on there is either buy one of these separately or go to your gun tech and say, can you make the changes for me? Um, the guy that fits it for you uh, will be able to program it. Um, <clears throat> so for your first one, I highly recommend you get the advanced version. If you have uh, one of these um, USB links already, um, for instance, they do come with the other Titans for the V2 and V3 gearboxes. Um, if you have one of these already, do not buy the advanced version unless you want a second one of these. I have two advanced versions because I wanted to have two of these. Uh, one that goes in my kit bag that never leaves that bag and one that I have in my kind of workshop um, and um, around the house. Uh, but if you have uh, an advanced or have one of these already, get the basic. So the basic is what went into this guy here. And you can then upgrade the firmware uh, through the control station software. And it costs about 35 euros. It's not expensive. And you get access to all the features. The, the features you get on basic, by the way, when I ran this, um, this last um, weekend, because I've literally only had this done a week, as I, as I kind of mentioned, um, it was actually running the basic firmware. So I upgraded this to the advanced firmware after I'd used it for a, for a Milson. And it was set up for me in the shop to be a DMR with, with some common DMR settings and they were rock solid. Um, to the extent that um, all I've done once upgrading is I've upgraded for the stats, not for the actual extra features. Because the features that basically be set up for, for this are enough for a DMR, but I want the stats. I'm a bit of a stats junkie. Um, you know, basically when I cycle and ride a bike and when I go to airsoft and all these things, I have heart rate trackers on me and everything else. I'm collecting stats. I'm a stats junkie. I'm a, uh, I'm a bit of a, a geek like that. And so I want to collect the stats that the advanced version gets me so I can have a look, see how my guns are performing, you know, see what operating temperatures this goes down to, see how many rounds I've fired, um, you know, stuff like that. So I kind of want all that extra information, and that's what you get with the advanced version. Um, so if you don't need those features, you can get away with just the basic. Um, but I do recommend you getting one of these anyway, because this will give you the ability to control and tweak your gun. Because um, you might want to change the burst settings, you might want to, you know, have it behave, uh, sort of eliminate semi uh, full auto, for instance, um, and so on. Um, you know, you, and also the other thing is to get access to that diagnostic information because that diagnostic information um, is really useful. So, all in all, great little purchase. Um, I'm definitely buying a couple more. And any other recoils I buy in the future um, will will have a Titan fitted to them at some point. Um, so I do heartily recommend it over some of the other options that are out there. There are a couple of other options. There's the BTC Spectre, 
and there's also the Mark Zero. Um, but to be honest, I think the Titan will be more reliable over time. Um, and I, you know, I've had this this one now for five months, and it's been rock solid. This one has been in there for two and a half, three months, and has been rock solid. And this has been in there a week, and it's been well. To be fair, only used once, so it's been so it was solid for the for the the time it's been used. But these two have had some pretty heavy use with the Titan in there, and they've both been rock solid and really really good. So with that, thank you all for watching. If you found today's video uh, useful, please hit the like button. If you want to see more of the content from the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell icon so you get notified when we post new content. And uh, with that, thanks for watching. Have a great day. See you guys next time.